Hi, I am Felipe Steven Luis G. Dos Reyes, an incoming fourth year BS Bio student of the University of the Philippines, Baguio. Currently, I am the president of the UP Biology Society. So my name is Father Nicanor Austriaco. I am a professor of biological sciences and sacred theology at the University of Santo Tomas. I have a joint appointment, so I'm also a professor of biology and theology at Providence College in the United States. So I am an MIT trained yeast molecular biologist and my laboratory in the United States usually uh, interrogates questions surrounding cancer and Parkinson's disease using yeast. But in the past year, we have pivoted our research to respond to the COVID crisis. And so my research students and I uh, in the United States began a project to develop a yeast-based vaccine platform for COVID-19 for the Philippines. Uh, we completed the, the design and the construction of that yeast, which is currently being tested by my research team at USD in the Philippines. Well, uh, it, that's a very complicated question because I'm also a priest. So it depends on what you mean and how you count the years. But I have been running an active molecular biology laboratory for 16 years now. To be honest, just like for everyone else, it is challenging. Well, for me, it has been challenging for the fact that we do not have access to practical skills. Moreover, I believe that us microbiologists should employ our imagination. Just like in systems biology, we should not focus on the symptom itself of the pathophysiology, but rather we want to know what causes the anomaly or gusto namin malaman kung ano yung nagkakos sa problem ng pinaharap ng isang system. Of course, in the micro level. And that is something hard to acquire in an online setting. Nevertheless, yung mga recommended readings, mga media, I think kaya naman, kinakaya for online setting. And you'll be friends with Jawets and other microbiology references like Maligan or Black Biology of Microorganisms. Well, I mean, I think as, as everyone, first I have to begin, right? So as a human being, the pandemic is of course a profoundly um, unsettling event, probably in the lives of, of billions of people throughout the planet. But as a molecular biologist it has been uh, an exhilarating challenge to try to figure out how the scientific how my scientific background and my scientific knowledge that God had given to me over the years could be used in service of the Filipino people uh, to respond to that crisis. So I want to become a microbiologist because I want to become microorganisms. It's very However, you might also think na gusto kong pag-aralan yung mga pathogenic bacteria or other pathogenic microorganisms but I am also fond of studying or observing protists. But for a decision that will affect the long-term status of my life, I want to become a microbiologist for the fact that I want to establish connection between us humans to the microcosmos. And also, I would like to become a doctor and I think studying microbiology is a great deal for me in the future of medicine. So I think recognized naman yung mga health workers natin dito sa Pilipinas, especially that we have labeled them as frontliners. However, the question is, is the support enough? And my answer is, I think it is not yet for the fact that we have a problem in supporting them. So yung action natin, hindi siya nag equate sa mga sinasabi. 
And also, matagal nang usapin dati pa, before pa ng pandemic, bakit nga ba maalis sa mga frontliners natin papuntang abroad? The, I think the problem is that we stagnate them or yung mga, for example, we do not support their knowledge improvement or na i-stagnate na lang sila. Hindi na sila umaasenso, hindi lang in terms of pera, kundi sa kaalaman na dapat nila makuha as time passes by. And I think, hindi talaga. Hindi pa siya ino. Well, I think one of the challenges, and so, uh, one of the things I also do is I, I, I do data analysis for the Philippine pandemic, right? So uh, one of the things that we have seen is that the Philippines has struggled with the pandemic because we are understaffed with healthcare workers, not just physicians, but also and most profoundly nurses. And so one of the things that, the, that we as Filipinos have to do in the future in order to prepare for a future pandemic, because it's clear there will be probably be uh, future pandemics in our lifetime, is that we have to find ways to encourage our Filipino kababayans who want to be, uh, to, who, are, who are training to be nurses and, and doctors to stay at home in the Philippines in order to serve rather than to go abroad to become OFWs. So I was scared, of course. No time na yun, we were studying vir virology in our microbiology lecture, and I sensed na this virus will have a lot of mutations because of its nature, like RNA virus. Since RNA dependent on polymerase, niya, of course we can expect mutations, and look what we have now: we have Delta, we have Alpha, a lot of mutations. And so scary and there is hindi tayo dapat maging makam or hindi tayo dapat makampan with these viruses well actually i was still in the united states at that time and i returned to the philippines uh, in march of 2020 to give a lecture at USD and ended up getting locked down here in the Philippines for five months. I was only supposed to stay in the Philippines for five days and ended up staying for five months. But then that was a providential turn of events because it allowed me to um, focus on the Philippines and to try to help to respond to the crisis in the Philippines. Of course, just like everyone, the online learning environment, the way we interact with our classmates, our professors, and do our submissions or requirements. For example, in our thesis, or in replacement of doing an experimental setup, we will do meta-analysis meta study na lang, just to avoid the risk of getting COVID. Other than that, of course, nag-iba din yung paggawa ng mga laboratory reports for your submissions and requirements. You may do laboratory simulations like to lobster. So isipin mo yung nag-script ka sa agar plate online. Parang Y8 na ako. But I guess it is still helpful pa rin naman. The greatest lesson I have learned from this pandemic is that Sana hindi natin tinitingnan yung mga maliliit na bagay as simply or simple objects lamang for the fact that we have to deal with them as if we know them. And how do we do that? We do research. And I think research is very important. So hindi lang siya think, it is a fact. Research is, an, is very important in terms of knowing our future and knowing our past and dealing with the present. So um, this past year was supposed to be a sabbatical year, a rest year, and yet it has become probably the, one of the busiest, if not the busiest years of my life. And yet it has been an incredible privilege to have the opportunity, uh, especially to return to my homeland of the Philippines in order to serve and respond to the crisis here.
So aside from giving support to our frontliners, I think the government needs to improve their coordination with our frontliners. And aside from that, I think the vaccination system should be refurbished. So as a molecular biologist, I would have to say, look, we need to up the game in molecular biology in the Philippines. There's simply not enough molecular biologists. Our infrastructure is weak. Um, we, we need to invest in molecular biology in the country. The equipment is actually hard to come by. Um, there are there are pieces of equipment that I was used to having used to having in my laboratory in the U.S. that is just very difficult to obtain in the Philippines. So um, my hope is to build the, the capacity, the molecular capacity at home in the Philippines, and to to really encourage Filipinos to go into molecular biology. Of course, yung mga face-to-face -face sessions namin sa laboratory, yung mga sterilization techniques like yung autoclave, yung waiting time na napakatagal, and especially yung times na makakabasag ka ng petri plate dahil hindi mo na, nabalot na maayos bago mo maisalang. So aside from that, of course, yung, yung mga bacteria namin na iwan sa university. I wonder what happened to them. I think the first, the fondest memory was when I was in graduate school and I cloned my gene, my first aging gene for the first time at two o'clock in the morning and there was no one else to share that excitement with. So I went outside into the hallway of the building and found the janitor and brought the janitor into the lab to look under the microscope, to look at the yeast cells that were there that showed that I had finally cloned my gene after 18 months. I think, you know, it's one of those things. And I, to know something about the world, to know something about um, nature that no one else has ever known in the history of our planet, and to be the first one to know that. And that is incredibly exciting, especially after many, many months and years of work. And then to be able to share it with someone else. Ah. That's what a scientist is for, you know? The, the moment of discovery is incredibly addictive. First of all, thank you very much for, since naging part po kayo in solving our problem in pandemic. And I have three hopes for you. First of all is that I hope you stay safe, especially you are the ones handling these microorganisms directly. Second is that I hope you stay sane in this time of pandemic. And lastly, I hope that we become more recognized in our field. Yun lang po and again, thank you very much po. Um, it's a very difficult challenge. Um, especially in the Philippines because of our lack of financial support for the sciences. And yet, as we saw during the pandemic, it is an essential part of the infrastructure of any nation, any society, any people, in order to protect our Kababayans against illness and in this particular case, against a global pandemic. So I encourage our, our aspiring Filipinos many of whom have never thought about becoming molecular biologists, to consider doing that, not only because it is so exciting to do science, to know something that no one else has known. I mean, think about it. Medicine, you just do everything that everyone tells you to do. Science, scientists make medicine possible. Without biologists, medicine is not possible. We are the ones who understand the basics. We discover the drugs that doctors use. So we are we, we are like the frontliners. Um, the doctors, they're frontliners for the patients, but for the for the art and science of medicine, we are the frontliners. Uh, you, you cannot cure cancer without cancer molecular biologists. Uh, my students look for chemotherapeutic agents. These will be the chemotherapeutic drugs that will that's that doctors will use in the future. And they will forget 
when they pick up a, a, a drug, that this drug would not be in their hands if not for the work and the sacrifice and the sweat of a basic scientist, especially a molecular biologist.